Hi, what's up? I'm Channel Pup, the mascot for the level-headed fanboy, and it has been a year since we last ranked the final bosses in the Sonic games. Oh, well, roundabout. And since then, we've actually got a surprising amount of new final bosses in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. So today, I present to you the new updated list of every mainline Sonic game final boss, ranked from worst to best. Now, a few things to get out of the way, this is just mainline titles. I wanna make that really clear. People are going to ask me, where's Sonic and the Secret Rings? Where's Sonic and the Black Knight? They're not on the list, because they are not mainline Sonic games. Now, people did make a very good point when they were saying, okay, but you did include the final boss of Shadow the Hedgehog in your previous list. Is Shadow the Hedgehog not the very definition of a spin-off? And it, it's one of those ones where it's kind of in a weird sort of interim area where it is, by all definitions, a spin-off, yet it's treated as, like, the next big chapter in the Sonic story. Either way, I'm, I'm nixing it from here. It's not on the list, uh, because we've got quite a few new final bosses on this list now, and I, I would rather make up the space for them than have this video drag out any longer talking about a boss that we've already talked about. And one that I don't really have any strong feelings towards any which way, so yeah, Shadow the Hedgehog is not included on this list this time. And, of course, if you like Sonic stuff, and if you enjoy this video, uh, be sure to hit subscribe. You won't be disappointed when you see how much Sonic content is on this channel. Some placements may have shifted around since last time as tastes do kind of change, but um, at the end of the day, it's nothing too important. It is just my silly personal opinion, nothing to get too pressed about. So without further ado, in at number 23, at the very soggy bottom of this list, we have the Egg Spinner from Sonic CD. This is a terrible finale to Sonic CD. We've got a game here where Dr. Robotnik is literally manipulating time and space, and it is up to Sonic to save the future. And the final boss of this game is a big propeller. Great, yeah, that'll do it. That's a worthy climax. This is the game that brought us Metal Sonic. And the final boss is a big propeller. Now, if this were just a boss fight in the game, this would be okay. It's fair, there's a very simple challenge to it, which is befitting of most Sonic boss fights. But the finale, really? This is underwhelming even as far as just basic Eggman contraptions go. Trash. Rubbish. Not good. In at number 22 is the Time Eater from Sonic Generations. What do you get when you pit two Sonics, all of their collective friends over the years, against two Dr. Robotniks piloting a mech that eats time and space for breakfast, with the goal of undoing their previous defeats. You get... <laughs> you get this. There is the joke of holding a button to win in the boost Sonic games, but that is literally what this boss fight is. You hold down the boost button, you avoid some very easily avoidable obstacles, until you eventually reach the Time Eater's balls and then break them. Rinse and repeat. The Time Eater's attacks either just push you back a little bit, or they soft lock you out of playing the fight altogether, or they slow down time, which is really more a minor annoyance than it is anything else. Made worse by the fact that we have what would become a trend of just Sonic's friends serving as cheerleaders rather than doing anything actually useful. And in this case, they are really stating the obvious. The biggest challenge when it comes to the Time Eater fight is just being able to see the rings, which blend in with the Time Vortex behind them. Once you know to look out for them, this boss is easy as pie. And again, we we've got a time travel story, in this case, a time travel contraption to fight, and yet we're doing pretty much nothing with that concept. The best thing about this is that you can kind of see the gun truck floating through the time vortex like it's nothing. That, that kind of stuff's kind of cool. If they had more of that, you'd at least, you know, make up for the lack of gameplay mechanic with a bit of spectacle, but like, they just don't do enough with it. Which is what lands this boss fight all the way down here in number 22. But then in number 21, we have the Egg Robo from Sonic Lost World. Now I will say this, it was cool to see modern Sonic fight a giant Robotnik mech in a 3D game. That was actually something we hadn't had for a while, and I do like that this robot mech here looks a lot like Metal Robotnik from the Sonic OVA movie, complete with his own little cape. I like that enough. The boss fight itself, though, is a copy-paste of the Egg I'm Not Saying That wisp 
from Sonic Colors. Except here the boss is significantly shorter and easier, with a lot less attacks and a gameplay style that isn't quite as befitting. Not to mention the fact that Dr. Robotnik hasn't really been set up as the main antagonist of this game, yet here he is as the final boss, as though it's an obligation. This is okay. Like, if it weren't for the fact that we have done this before, this would be okay. But the biggest crime this one commits is not only is it way too familiar, it's also worse. So yeah, that's why it is in at number 21. In at number 20 is the Phantom Egg from Sonic Mania. I don't know about you guys, I think Sonic Mania is a fantastic game, even if I do feel it relies a little too much on the familiar tried and tested. The final boss does not live up to the rest of the game though, which is also a shame because all of the pieces are here for a solid finale. So we're not doing the giant robot thing that we've seen in Sonic 3 and Knuckles and Sonic 2, and that's okay with me. What we have here is at least more interesting than the egg spinner from Sonic CD, and it also makes use of the game's main MacGuffin, the Phantom Ruby. As this boss is not only an Eggman contraption with these electric cables and stuff like that, but he can also form these phantom hands that can catch you and send you into the hard-boiled heavies, another antagonist that was set up over the course of the game. All of the pieces are here. The foundation for a great finale is here. The problem is that you're kind of just going through the motions with this fight. The actual Eggman part is the only bit you really have to do, whereas the parts against the hard-boiled heavies are just these little timed segments where you don't even really need to get a hit in on the hard-boiled heavies, just, you know, avoid getting hit effectively. And I feel like the remedy to make this better is kind of obvious. Have it so that you have to at least get one hit on the hard-boiled heavies before it sends you back to Dr. Robotnik. Because of that, the hard-boiled heavies feel like they're only in this fight out of obligation. Just a quick flash there, and it's nothing you have to do anything with. There's no player agency to these parts of the fight. It's the missed potential that makes this one egregious. It's not a terrible fight, but there's just a lot of potential that wasn't met. Then in number 19, we have the secret final boss of Sonic Mania, which is the Egg Reverie. Another instance where the pieces are all here, but they just haven't clicked together correctly. It feels like a first draft. So yes, this is the secret final boss that you get when you've got all of the Chaos Emeralds, similar to what we had with the Doomsday Zone in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Except this is a step down in just about every single way. So you're fighting against both Dr. Eggman and the Heavy King inside of this sort of Phantom Ruby null space, while Robotnik and Heavy King fight each other over the Phantom Ruby. And there's a generous smorgasbord of rings just out and about for you to collect, but the difference here is that the stakes aren't really there since there is a flaw to this fight. There is a ground that you could theoretically walk on were you to be popped out of your super form. You can't, the game just kills you. So it's overall just not as well thought out as the Sonic 3 and Knuckles Doomsday Zone. It just, it doesn't have those same tangible stakes and when you do die here, it's like, okay, wh why did he have to die? Why could this not just be a setback? Dr. Robotnik can survive in here, so why can't I? And then sadly, Robotnik's tussle with the Heavy King doesn't really affect gameplay in the slightest. What you're ultimately doing is the typical supersonic final boss fight of, like, bonk your head into the enemy, except this time there are two enemies. The overall presentation of this one is what sells it, but again, there's just not much here. There's a lot of cool ideas in this fight that just don't feel fleshed out in any kind of meaningful capacity, and what you end up with is kind of all flash and no real substance, effectively. Which is what lands this one in at position number 19. However, it must be said now, like, there aren't really any bad final boss fights from here. I feel like the final boss fights stopped being actually anything less than just average once we got to the Sonic Lost World Egg Robo. So now we move on to number 18 with the Egg Crusher from Sonic 1, the very first Sonic final boss. The very first final boss, huh. Poetic. Throughout the entirety of its run, like, Sonic 1 basically boasts not having the best of anything when it comes to the original Mega Drive Sonic games, with the exception of Green Hill, which is like a standout level, but like everything else here is like, 
We're still working on it. We're still working out some kinks. We haven't quite got that confidence, that spectacle yet that we'd see in Sonic 2. And I think the Egg Crusher, just the final zone, the big showdown of this game, yeah, it doesn't go anywhere near as big as later games would go. With that being said, though, it still feels like an appropriate scale-up from the previous boss fights that we've had on this list. For starters, this one can get you in one hit. It's crush damage, and a crush death is instant death. But we've also got these little lasers that shoot from overhead as well. Now, you'd think, okay, Sonic can survive that. No, he can't, because you have no rings for this fight. And to be fair, I think the fight is balanced enough, and the attacks are telegraphed enough for you to actually not need any rings to fight this boss fight. I, I feel like if you had rings, it wouldn't actually be much harder than any of the other fights in this game. But I think what makes this kind of work for me is that throughout the game, up until this point, you've got Dr. Robotnik in a egomatic machine, mobile thing, eggmobile, whatever you want to call it, and it will have some kind of contraption attached to it, some kind of weapon, be it a wrecking ball or anything else. For this fight, he's actually a part of the zone scenery. He's actually in these pistons that are coming down to crush you, and it's kind of random where he's going to end up. There's actually quite a bit to be appreciated about this one. Like Sonic 1, it feels like a work in progress compared to the spectacles that we would see later, but for now, Final Zone is a pretty solid finale to Sonic 1. In at number 17 is the Death Egg Showdown from Sonic 2. So this is our first multiple phased fight for a Sonic game. With the first phase being Sonic vs. the Mecha Sonic Mark 1 before moving over to the Death Egg Robot. And depending on your region, this would be the first time you would see a robotic doppelganger of Sonic the Hedgehog. Technically, Metal Sonic comes first, but I know that there are regions where Sonic CD released after Sonic 2, making the Mecha Sonic Mark 1 the first robotic Sonic for a lot of people. And I mean, I didn't have Sonic CD in my childhood, so like this was my first robotic Sonic, and I thought it was awesome. Unlike Metal Sonic, he's more of a fighting robot, complete with a bunch of attacks. This is not like a chase-themed fight or a race, and it's certainly not as iconic as the Stardust Speedway Showdown from Sonic CD between Sonic and Metal Sonic, but it is still a really cool prelude to the final battle, which is, of course, probably the most iconic Robotnik contraption of all time, the Death Egg Robot, a giant mech made in Robotnik's image. You've just fought a Robot Sonic, now you're fighting a Robot Robotnik. That in itself is really cool. But another thing that just kind of works about this fight is the fact that throughout Sonic 2, it's all about going fast this time compared to Sonic 1's more methodically placed platforming. Sonic 2 is this power fantasy compared to Sonic 1, and the boss fights were just, you could wail on them. You could just bounce off the top of them repeatedly and get them down really quickly. This guy though, you can try it, and there are small windows of opportunity to do so, but... You've got to be pretty much frame perfect to nail that. There are windows of opportunity that are tiny in this boss fight, and then there are larger windows of opportunity that you can kind of wait for. So if you want to try and brute force it, you've got to have an immaculate understanding of this fight. I also just love the fact that Robotnik's got a contingency plan should you get behind him as well. But the, yeah, there's two different ways of going through this boss. You've got the kind of playing it safe run, you know, taking it slow, taking it methodical, or you got the jackass run where you are risking death every moment you attempt to strike. But if you succeed, you are rewarded with better time, and that is still very much in line with the Sonic philosophy. Also, I dare say this is one of the most challenging final boss fights if you do decide to brute force it in the classic Sonic games. With a bunch of different attacks, this Swiss army knife of a Robotnik contraption is going to go down in history as one of the most iconic boss fights in the franchise. The only reason why it's down so low on my list is while it may be iconic, there are boss fights I prefer to this one, including our number 16 pick. We have Big Arms from Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This is another multi-phased fight taking place at the launch base zone as Sonic and Tails stop at nothing to prevent the Death Egg from launching back into the sky like it did in Sonic 2. And so Dr. Robotnik is just throwing everything at you in this stage. 
he starts off by firing wrecking balls at you. Then he has this sort of multi-layered Russian doll robot that shoots lasers at you and protects itself with this spiked orb that rotates around its head, before finally bringing us to the grand finale. The sky goes dark as we meet Dr. Robotnik's latest final boss contraption, which is a bit smaller scale than the Death Egg robot that we had in Sonic 2, but this is just a robot made to dispose of Sonic efficiently. And I won't lie, this is an easier fight than the previous final boss fights on this list. If you know how to take advantage of Sonic's insta-shield move, you can actually kind of cheese this fight. Not to mention also having the benefit of rings this time. But it is another fight where Robotnik's got a different arsenal of attacks. He's got these two massive arms that can grab you and slam you into the ground. There are spikes on the top of this mech, meaning that you can't jump on top of it. There's a jet coming out the back, meaning that you can't jump it from the back. So you've really got this small window that you can actually attack. Again, while smaller scale than the Death Egg robot, it feels like Robotnik's basically got a Swiss Army knife of a weapon here. And while no, this wasn't the intended final showdown of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and it is a much smaller stakes finale than the previous one, I gotta admit, in the interim period between Sonic 3's release and the lock-on legend that is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, this was a worthy conclusion. Probably wasn't at the time, but looking back, I, I think this was a fine ending. Of course, though, Sonic 3 and Knuckles took things to another level, and we'll see how high that ends up on this list later. In at number 15 is the Metal Overlord from Sonic Heroes. And I just gotta get this out of the way. It's always gonna be disappointing to me that there was no actual Metal Sonic fight in Sonic Heroes you only fight the Metal Overlord. There's not even like a cool fight against Neo Metal Sonic or anything like that, and it's just like, why bring Metal Sonic back if you're just gonna turn him into a kaiju and not take advantage of having a Sonic doppelganger to fight? I guess we kinda had that in Sonic Adventure 2, but then what's the point of this being Metal Sonic and not just any other Dr. Robotnik robot? Fan service, that's why, but it's like, yes, when I think Ah, the final boss fight against Metal Sonic for the first time he's been back since Sonic CD. If you don't count Knuckles Chaotix because that's not mainline. I mean, fuck, he turned into a kaiju in that too. Okay, so I feel like this fight does miss the point of Metal Sonic. And it wouldn't be so bad had we actually got to fight a regular Metal Sonic fight. But then, you know, all honesty, this is still like a pretty cool fight. You fight the Metal Overlord as the different teams, and he kind of mimics your abilities as well, which is pretty cool, you know? It kind of sells the idea that this is this artificial intelligence. He's a robot copy of Sonic, and now he's gonna robot copy everyone else. That's pretty cool. Then, of course, you have the final phase where you play as Super Sonic and, uh... and, uh, Tails and Knuckles in these little shield bubbles carried by Super Sonic and fight the Metal Overlord. Strictly by building up your Team Blast meter and then just going ham. And that's not too shabby. This is one where the execution elevates an otherwise pretty underwhelming premise. Not only do we have the disappointment of them not really utilizing Metal Sonic very well in this fight, we've also got the fact that they don't really utilize the other teams, it is just Team Sonic, and even then, Sonic is the only one being blessed with a super form here. This would have been a little hype if they had Super Knuckles and Super Tails shown properly, and it would have been really hype if we'd seen the other teams get super forms. And yeah, that, that sort of altogether atmosphere of Sonic Heroes does feel a little bit underestimated when it is just like, okay, Sonic's gonna save the day. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But again, the execution is everything here, and it's a well-executed fight. In at number 14 is Solaris from Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Delivering a very strong conclusion to an otherwise very troubled game. We've got the fusion of Mephilus the Dark and Iblis, the unity between these two forming Solaris, an all-powerful god that can only be fought in the past, present, and future, with Shadow Rep in the past, Sonic Rep in the present, and Silver Rep in the future. Fighting in a time and space rift because this thing has just destroyed all of time and space. See, now this is, this is what Sonic CD's ending should have been. Sonic, Shadow, and Silver's individual abilities have been translated quite well to their superforms, with different attack patterns that require a specific superform to avoid or break through. So, for one, like, Solaris might send a load of uh, asteroids your way, and it's best to just be a Silver and just send them right back to the core of Solaris. Sonic's primary ability is headbutting once again, while Shadow can shoot Chaos Spears, and this is a really cool fight 
that takes advantage of three different super forms. Not to mention it is cinematic as hell, the stakes are there, the music. The music, oh my goodness. The overall gameplay of this one is nothing remarkable, although it is probably one of the more polished components of Sonic 06. This was a really strong note to end out Sonic 06 on. So yeah, unremarkable gameplay is salvaged by very cinematic storytelling, and the same is true of our next entry on the list. In at number 13, we have The End from Sonic Frontiers. Probably the most controversial final boss in Sonic history, and I completely get why. The first phase of this boss, compared to the bosses that came before it in Sonic Frontiers, is almost a complete write-off. Now, when that first version of this list came out, a lot of people were asking me, how can this boss fight come up so high? And how could I have any nice things to say about the Supreme Titan fight? And that is simply based on in reference to other Sonic final boss fights. Just being able to punch a giant mech as Super Sonic was always going to propel this a little higher than the average Sonic final boss. Which isn't actually saying much considering this is still only in at number 13. But it's really only in reference to the other Titan fights that the Supreme Titan fight just sucks. You know, like, and, and it's not something that can be ignored. This is still a really underwhelming fight for this game, but in a vacuum, it's so, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of good, right? It has gone down in my estimations a little bit because I, I still think even in a vacuum, it is a bit unfair that parrying something that, you know, we've been trained to do is something you can get punished for now. And like, even in a vacuum, this thing has way too few hit points. Phase one is almost a total write-off. Phase 2, on the other hand, is in some ways worse, in some ways better. It's better in that it is actually challenging this time around. It is the hardest boss fight in the game. It is worse in that it is a completely different genre of video game to the rest of the game. So, following the big grand spectacle of Super Sonic just brawling his way through these massive robots, we follow it up with a top-down space shooter, akin to Ikaruga, as the final boss of the game. Now, what bolsters this up for me is actually more the story context, for me anyway. Thematically, I think this fight works really well and still does work really well. Playing as Sage piloting the Supreme Titan using the technology of the Ancients that they are out to avenge against the end, a vicious, boastful, moustache-twirling planet. Yeah, I, I can't help but vibe with that, that's awesome. And then you got stuff like the kind of foreshadowing from like when Giganto threw Sonic across Kronos Island, pretty much wounding him, whereas here now we've got the Supreme Titan throwing Super Sonic through the fake moon. That's just kind of cool. That That's really awesome in my opinion. The music's fantastic. I love the space setting. So like with Solaris, while the gameplay is nothing remarkable, it's still a really cool climax to the game. It's controversial. It's one that has brought about a lot of conflicted opinions, and I myself am conflicted on it too. I think thematically it works really, really well. From a gameplay standpoint, it not so much. But where this boss fight does succeed, it succeeds with flying colors. In at number 12 is the Egg Station Robot from Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. Only in a list of final bosses ranked will you hear me say nice things about any of the Sonic 4 episodes. As what we have with this boss fight is basically the Death Egg Robot on steroids. It's got more attacks, it's got more attack patterns, it works a lot faster, and it manages to be 10 times more difficult than the Sonic 2 version of the Death Egg Robot, despite the fact you get rings for this one. And in the end, what you end up with is an arduous, yet really cool fight. There are obviously things I don't like so much about this fight too. I don't like the fact that it is another rehash of an existing boss fight. In fairness, I can at least call this one an improvement. And also I could definitely do without the boss rush leading up to this point. That does just feel laborious and exhaustive. And the final blow that this thing does, he takes out all the ground beneath you and you need to get away basically. But it's not so much that you need to get away on time so much as it is you need to know where to stand and first time players aren't really gonna know that. So this boss fight could take you out in one fell swoop at the very end 
and that would mean that you'd have to do the whole thing again. Not including the boss rush at the very least. That's not fair. I do recognize that there is a component of trial and error when it comes to Sonic, but you shouldn't over rely on that. It should still be clear what to do for a first time player. It just shouldn't be easy to achieve that. So, like, if it's based around, you know, getting away on time, fair. If it's based on knowing where to stand for the final attack, that's not fair. But I can't deny that outside of that, this is a really high stakes recreation of the Death Egg Robot fight, and I, I gotta applaud it for that. You'll never hear me say this outside of this context, but bravo Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1. In at number 11, and funny enough this released the same year, is the Egg I'm Not Saying That Wisp from Sonic Colors. Look, I know it's not the word, but there are people that are just praying for my downfall and would clip that out of context and spread it around Twitter, and no one's gonna care to listen for any kind of context, so fuck it, I'm not gonna say it. Now this is a really cool final boss fight for a Sonic game, and it is also one that was just a breath of fresh air at the time. Admittedly, it's not as original as people might like to say, because it is basically the Egg Devil Ray from Sonic Unleashed, with a few modifications, but even then, this is really cool in the way that this fight uses the Wisps against you. All of its attacks are themed around the Wisps. This was the first time in like a decade that a modern 3D Sonic game had Dr. Robotnik as the final boss rather than some Eldritch Abomination. And while I love me some Eldritch Abominations, it was a welcome change of pace for Sonic Colors, especially given that we hadn't even set up any kind of big God of Destruction or anything like that. So it really was just like, oh, Eggman is actually the main villain this time. That's actually a really cool subversion. And you won't hear me praising the story of Sonic Colors much outside that. But this fight does a really nice job at utilizing Sonic's speed, utilizing Dr. Robotnik's ingenuity, utilizing the Wisps against you, and utilizing the Wisps in your favor as well, as the more you fight this boss, the more of the Wisps you save from out of the boss, and they give you your finishing blow, the final color blaster. I even love just little details such as, like, Dr. Eggman vacuuming the wisps from out of space to turn into power. That's just really, really cool. The challenge is just fair enough. It, it's, it's not, like, anything particularly difficult. Uh, and everything is telegraphed well, so I'll give it praise for that. Also, the music is fantastic for this fight, too. Little more epic than the fight really deserves, and you barely get to hear the final phase music. But hey, I guess that's what soundtrack albums are for. Doesn't change the fact that this is a cool fight, you know? It's cool to kind of end a Sonic game without Super Sonic just bonking his head into an Eldritch Abomination repeatedly. It requires you to think on your feet a little bit, use Sonic's abilities. It's a win-win all round. In at number 10, though, is the Death Egg Robot from Sonic Forces, which does reincorporate a lot of elements from the Egg Wisp over, in a way that is a little bit disappointing in spite of some refreshing and positive innovations made, but I'm getting ahead of myself. For the first two phases, this is an original- for, for, the, for the middle phase, this is an original fight. The first phase, okay, that is basically copy-pasted from the Egg Dragoon fight earlier in this very game, and it is bare bones basic, even by just classic Sonic final boss standards. But yeah, phase one, you fight it as classic Sonic. And he chucks rocks at you, which can take out the ground beneath you, and he shoots lasers, which can take out the ground beneath you, but you'd have to kind of suck to get caught out by that. And you basically just bounce these bits of rubble back at him until he finally flounders. Bringing us over to the second phase, which is the most original and best phase of this fight, where you play as the Avatar. This time in a 3D playing field, as he does more stuff to knock out the ground beneath you fires rockets at you that you have to either avoid or destroy, throws egg pawns at you that, yeah, you probably definitely have to destroy, and there are two places where you can hit this guy. You can either hit him on his hand using your wisp on, and admittedly there's only one good wisp on to fight this boss with, and that is definitely the flamethrower. But then you can try and get him in his chest, and that delivers way more damage. It's rewarding for taking the risk. Overall, that is a really good, really involving phase for this fight. Then with Phase 3, yeah, it's the Egg Wisp again, basically. However, there are a couple of differences now, as different lanes offer different power-ups, be it rings or wisps that you can boost with. And you have to boost in order to catch up with the Death Egg Robot this time, which you didn't have to do back in the Egg Wisp which does add a little more challenge to this fight. So this is, in my opinion, a better version of the Egg Wisp fight. 
But it doesn't change the fact that it is a bit disappointing to see this fight basically copy-pasted again, after Lost World already did it. But I can at least say, better is better. In at number 9 is the Egg Heart from Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2. And Sonic 4 Episode 2 had all original boss fights this time, and at this point I might as well, you know, praise Dimps for tying their shoes in the morning, but credit where it's due, the boss fights were unique. They required a lot of waiting around for the most part. Very, very turns-based. I, I think these boss fights are everything that Sonic Superstars gets accused of in the boss department. That being said though, the final boss was genuinely really unique and really cool. They strayed from the beaten track with this one, you're not fighting like a giant Eggman mech or anything like that, instead you are fighting against the heart of the Death Egg Mark II, which is being piloted by Eggy himself. And he's protecting it with these giant metal rings that you kind of run around to find your footing and make your way over to the Egg Heart. It is one of those instances of Dr. Robotnik's self-sabotage, though, where his basic defense measures are allowing you to attack him, but it's a video game, you know? But yeah, really, what would you do against the Egg Heart if you just let it float there and didn't even bother with the ring defenses? But this also takes cool advantage of the anti-gravity gimmick aboard the Death Egg 2 as well. Better yet, the attack phases are really cool too as Dr. Eggman electrifies the floor beneath you, and even takes out some of the platforms. He even starts shielding himself at one point, meaning that you can only take down that shield by doing Sonic and Tails' Super Sonic 69 move. And not to mention there are spikes on the bottom of the Egg Heart, so you gotta be careful where you're targeting it. Overall, this is a cool fight that factors in elements of the level you've played before, has a really unique idea for an Eggman mech, and really rewards you for having a good understanding of the toolkit that Sonic 4 Episode 2 provides you with with the Tails combo moves. This is a really, really solid finale to an otherwise very hit and miss game. In at number 8 is Fang the Hunter from Sonic Superstars Trip's Story. Now this is a boss where I have a love-hate relationship with it, but I can ultimately acknowledge that it is a really, really well-designed fight. There's just something about a boss that just wants you dead. And Fang is really, really, really out for blood in this fight, and he was already out for blood in this game up until this point, but here he's off the chains. For one, it's really cool that we get to fight the giant mech that was teased in the main story. That's a really cool payoff. And you've got two phases. You've got one where you have to kind of weave under these different lasers that Fang is shooting out from another mech, while he also tries to kamikaze the ground below you. And then, yeah, you've got the giant mech phase. And it factors in lots of different mechanics that you tried earlier in the game, such as the Sand Sanctuary boss fight hitting enemies back at Fang's mech. Now, I am gonna say this, though. This is a really, really, really long fight and there are a lot of instant kill attacks. I think the way to really make this one better would be if there were some form of checkpoint between phases. This is one of those instances where it is a hard fight, but the difficulty isn't my problem so much as how that difficulty is balanced. I think when you have a fight that relies a lot on recognizing enemy patterns, learning enemy patterns, you know, there, there is quite a bit of trial and error in there. While things are suitably telegraphed, I don't think you should be so punishing as to send us all the way back to the beginning of the first phase, because that's just frustrating. It can be that this is something you've mastered up until this point, and then you have to do the stuff you already know how to do ten times over just to get past this one thing. That's a part of Sonic Superstars' design that I really don't vibe with. Other than that though, it's a satisfying fight. When you finally get it down, it's a really, really cool fight. I just think even in this game's, you know, this is the game's hard mode, effectively. I, I don't think it is fair to give us no form of checkpoint whatsoever. Like, come on, you can play ball a little bit here. In at number seven is the Egg Fortress robot from Sonic Superstars, this being the final boss of the main story. A boss you can fight as any character you choose. You can even do it in multiplayer, and let me just say, this is an incredibly well-designed fight. 
It's really challenging, but I can't say it's not fair. Once again, it utilizes elements of previous boss fights, but in a more challenging degree. Here you've got the red rockets and the blue rockets coming down at you, and you know the blue rockets are ones you can send right back at the boss, but you have to get him from the back, and you have to kind of pay attention to the formation that those rockets are coming out in. He's also got these different attacks where it sort of turns into a bit of a bullet hell. He starts taking out bits of the ground beneath you. He's got this weird energy field attack, which is really cool. And I especially like the telegraphing on that attack. It quickly flashes yellow, you hear that little ping sound effect, and then you know to jump. Really cool stuff. Then there's the second phase of this fight, where he's chasing you from behind, and he's taking out the platforms beneath you, and you've got to run from him while also attacking him. It really rewards you for good use of your power-ups. I found the bullet and avatar power-ups really came in clutch for this part of the fight. However, that's really only good for the brute force technique. Otherwise, you're gonna kind of have to take your time and wait for your openings here. And I will admit that like most Sonic Superstars boss fights, this one does veer on just a bit too long if you decide not to brute force it. But that being said, it requires skill, while it is also pretty much fair. So yeah, this is a really strong fight. In at number six is the Death Egg Showdown from Sonic 3 and Knuckles as you fight the giant Eggman Robo in a couple of different phases. The first phase being avoiding getting crushed by his fingers while then destroying his fingers. The second phase being attacking the Master Emerald out of his egg throat while also avoiding snot rockets. The third phase being just attacking Eggman as he tries to make off with the Master Emerald. And in the fourth phase being the Doomsday Zone, which is of course only unlockable if you've got all the Chaos Emeralds, but I, I'm gonna pair it up here because you are still effectively fighting the same mech. Wowie is this boss ever climactic, and it is also absolutely fair in terms of both difficulty and the difficulty balancing as well. There is at least a certain degree of checkpoint going on here once you get to the Doomsday Zone. You don't have to fight the entire Eggman Robo all over again. But it's an intense finale as you see the Earth beneath you. You fight against one of the biggest mechs that Dr. Robotnik has ever made. It was certainly the biggest mech he's ever made up to this point. And then once Eggman seems defeated, you go chase him through space? That's awesome. And the first phase of that, he's shooting missiles at you and you have to lead the missiles back into him, so you're not just bonking him on the head. Although you do do that in the second phase. And because you're in space and there's no ground beneath you, you want to stay in your super form so you are incentivized to get rings and there is a tangible stake to it. This is an epic finale and a more than fitting end for Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This is the ultimate showdown of Ultimate Destiny between Sonic and Robotnik. And yeah, they haven't topped it as far as Sonic v Robotnik fights go because this is the last Robotnik final boss on this list. So, we're heading into the final five now. But before we do, a quick wellness break with our friend Coach Brett. Yo, Coach Brett here interrupting the video for a little bit of movement. All right, guys, we're gonna do a little bit of light band work to open up your chest, shoulders, and back. So what you wanna do is take the band, you're gonna do pull aparts at the nipple line here. You're gonna go diagonal in both directions and then behind the back, straight across. What I'd recommend is 10 to 15 reps per exercise at two to three sets a piece, and then you're good to go back to the video. Hey there, Coach Brett here with True Capacity, your path to a healthier you. And at True Capacity, we've got programs tailored specifically for you. It's a body weight program that all you need is just your body weight and a little determination. We've got a minimal equipment program where you don't really need anything, just the essentials. And then we also have a full gym access program where really the only thing you need is a gym membership and you're good to go. So let's embark on this journey together and click the link down below for more details. Thanks guys. Excited to see you in there. So in at number five, we have the Black Dragon, who I've affectionately dubbed Spyro from Sonic Superstars. This is the true final boss of the game in the dubbed Last Story. Very Sonic adventure, if you ask me. And this also marks classic Sonic's first Eldritch Horror as a final boss. I mean, this is kind of baby's first Eldritch Horror, really. As it is absolutely no more intimidating than, say, a Dragon Elder from Spyro, but... I mean, I don't hate the design. I, I think the design actually gets a little better in the second phase when he takes on that candy skull look. But okay, from a story standpoint, this is actually one of the weaker ones on this list. We know Dr. Robotnik is searching for a dragon, but other than that, this dragon just comes out of nowhere. Very, very tacked on. But what makes this so good, in my opinion, is that this is the most three-dimensional a classic Sonic final boss has ever felt. It feels like this big, large-scale event. 
get it? It's a dragon and they have scales of the large variety. Anyways, this dragon has numerous different types of attack, including throwing boulders at you, some of which you can hit back at it as telegraphed by these blue streaks behind them. Others create kind of these blue structures that you can kind of work your way through before they turn red and start pushing you back. And the camera shifts around in perspective as it moves around to the side of the dragon as you chase it down to get a hit in. And it's a fight where the attacks make a lot of use of foreground and background elements, which I really appreciate. They've done this in a way that only Sonic superstars could, only a 2.5D Sonic game could ever achieve, making this a really fitting ending. But I also love how Sonic's friends are getting involved in this fight too, in that you can see Knuckles and Tails and Trip and Amy all giving you rings to help you survive. That's great stuff, and I, I will say this, I do feel like, you know, Sonic Superstars having this very all-together vibe, all of these characters are important. It is kind of a shame that we're still ending it off with strictly Super Sonic by himself. But I am at least happy to see the friends getting some form of involvement. There are some attacks that are really tough as well, like when he spits out these little black holes at you, and the only way to get out of them is to dash, which costs you like five rings. Like, they had some really good ways to make this work with the challenge. Overall, I'm just really, really impressed with this final boss fight. It's a final boss fight in a 2D Sonic game, yet it feels three-dimensional. What this lacks in story, it more than makes up with, with gameplay mechanics. In at number four is Perfect Chaos from Sonic Adventure. And of course, this is one of the most iconic boss fights in Sonic history, up there with the Death Egg Robot. When you think most iconic 2D Sonic fights, you think Death Egg Robot. When you think most iconic 3D Sonic fights, you're probably thinking of Perfect Chaos. And I can absolutely see why this wrote the playbook for what Sonic boss fights would be in the modern era. We're not just throwing down against Dr. Eggman, we are throwing down against a literal god. In this very shonen anime showdown with Sonic in his super form, while Crush 40 are just going nuts on the soundtrack, it is brilliant. But also, mechanically speaking as well, this is a great fight because you have to build up enough speed to reach perfect chaos's brain. It's simple, but mechanically speaking, very, very effective. But it's really just in how this fight sets the scene, the music, the scenery, the atmosphere. Everything about this just works on so many levels. But I do feel like it has been topped. So in at number three, we have the final hazard from Sonic Adventure 2. And yeah, you probably could have seen this coming. There's a lot of different cylinders that are firing off with this one. You've got the team up between Sonic and Shadow after an entire game of him being the primary antagonist. You've got Shadow's big redemption arc as well. You've got the high stakes of the Eclipse Cannon on its collision course to Earth. The fight in itself is mechanically sound. It's not quite as amazing, mechanically speaking, as the Perfect Chaos fight was. However, it is absolutely fair as you dodge asteroids and lasers to make your way over to the sensitive parts of the final hazard, the, the bio lizard, I guess, who has the space colony arc stuck up his ass. You've got your friends cheering you on. You play as both Sonic and Shadow. You've got Live and Learn, the most iconic Sonic song ever written playing. It, I, I don't know how this could be anywhere but where it is, or number one, were it not for these last two picks. This fight is incredible, and the perfect capstone to one of the most intense Sonic games ever made. But in at number two, we have Dark Gaia from Sonic Unleashed. Another multi-phased fight, as in the first phase you are alternating between Sonic and the Gaia Golem, or Gaia Colossus, depending on what version you play. A good chip. You're playing as chip. Now for the chip parts, I must say they do leave a bit to be desired as all these years later, I still haven't figured out a way to do a damage free run here. And I, I kind of wonder, do you actually just have to take damage? Because there are some lasers that you can't avoid the initial attack. You can just really only do what you can to dodge the remainder of it, right? A am I am I doing this wrong? Yeah, you can block them and that will keep them from chipping away at more of your head, chipping away, chipping away at more of your health. But, like, I don't know. The other thing that does bring this down a little bit, I mean, saying that, it was number one on the list originally, and it's only number two now that a more recent boss fight has taken my heart more than this one did. But there are things that do let this fight down a little bit, such as, you know, how many intrusive load times there are. It's very QTE heavy in spots. But okay, so after each of the chip sections, which there are three, you've got a section where you then run down the Gaia Colossus's arm as Sonic, just the regular Sonic 
and uh, that takes you into a QTE where you smash the shit out of one of Dark Gaia's eyes. Which is raw, but it's also really intense because there's a really strict timer working against you as Dark Guy continuously throws attacks your way. These are some great bits of Sonic platforming as well. Also, just the atmosphere and art design of, like, the architecture of the Guy Colossus that you're running through, it looks fantastic. Like, Sonic Unleashed is still the one to beat aesthetically. Including some really amazing, fully CGI pre-rendered cutscenes driving this one forward as well, not to mention showing all of the residents of Earth bearing witness as Dark Gaia takes over the world, the stakes are tangible. But then, of course, you've got the supersonic phase, where the seven lights of the Earth rekindle, and our golden beacon of hope goes in to fight perfect Dark Gaia. With all of his eyes on display, looking even more like an Eldritch Abomination than before, he's got extra arms that pierce out of his skin as his blood is dripping everywhere. And I am, of course, talking about the mainline version of this fight, so rather than ramming into his eyes like you do in, say, the Wii version, you are instead uh, beating his one-eyed snakes into submission. Whilst Chip has orgasms, and he also fires sperm cells at you as... Wow. Uh, why? But, I mean, come on, it's, this is epic. The music, the stakes, the fact that you have to defeat Dark Gaia before it kills Chip. Like, there's just, there's so much going on here. And then, like, the initial run-up to that final boss as well, which really reminiscent of Doomsday Zone, as you collect up your rings and you're avoiding these uh, floating asteroids in the core of the Earth's gravitational pull. It, it's a Sonic game, what do you expect? D look, th there's no surprise that this turned out to be, like, at the top of my list, right? I'm a sucker for a supersonic spectacle, and, and this is it. It's delivering on that. It's the most cinematic that we've had. It's an absolutely top-tier fight. But admittedly, it has now been dethroned, okay? All right, so get ready, because in first place, we have the end fight from Sonic Frontiers, The Final Horizon. So this is the alternate ending to Sonic Frontiers, dubbed Another Story, which I'm assuming this is the canon version, because they went out of their way to make a whole new ending for this game. Um, but yeah, it's shot all the way up from number 13 to number 1 because of this DLC. And I, I think Sonic Frontiers The Final Horizon, as much as I love that DLC, is a bit of a mixed bag in spots. But for the handful of problems I had with that DLC, this final boss fight made absolutely everything worthwhile. So unlike the original version of this fight, the end is not initially piloting the Supreme Titan. The Supreme Titan here serves as the last of the trials before the end arrives to Earth from space. So I'm guessing the end's release from cyberspace it just popped it in the sky or something and then it was just approaching Earth. I don't know the exact logistics of that, but yeah, we've got the surprise final Titan. And the Supreme fight is the exact same as it was in the base game so it's still not a great fight. However, as just a prelude to the main fight, it works a lot better in this context because the fight that follows against the end is a very, very different beast this time. Rather than the end fleeing the Supreme Titan to head up into space, instead the end is coming from space to here to use the Supreme Titan as its ultimate weapon, using it to destroy Sonic and his friends because it just feels like being a shit, I guess. Insult to injury using the last vessel of a civilization you wiped out to wipe out what remains. The end is one petty bastard, and uh, he's also very cruel, as you see the Supreme Titan really trying to shake off the end's influence and then the end just slams his head into the ground repeatedly. And with the end now taking full control over the Supreme Titan, <laughs> it transforms into an eldritch horror version of the Supreme Titan, complete with extra arms rolling over like a dog, a rabid dog, chomping away at you. It comes rushing after you like the girl from The Ring. Like, good job taking a technologically advanced robot and turning it into an absolute monster, a feral beast. I even love how the introductory boss title card flickers from Supreme to the end because the end has taken complete control over the Supreme. It even just looks that much more climactic because you've got the fake moon looming over you as you battle against the end. And of course, it's here we realize the necessity for Sonic to become Super Sonic 2 is because Super Sonic can't even parry the end's attacks, nor do his attacks against the end really do anything. The transformation into Super Sonic 2 is brilliant. While Super Sonic 2 doesn't really feel very different to the base Super Sonic, 
it is clear that this is an additional power that is being held back and restrained within Supersonic. The augmentation just means that he's now got a perfect parry, which if anything is more of a weakness than a strength. But what does it for me is just the dude's body language. Like, he is parrying attacks like it is nothing. He is fighting the end like it is a paperweight. Supersonic 2 is just relentlessly cool. And the end is legitimately pretty frightening. One thing I really like about this boss is that you have to have a strategy. You cannot just brute force your way into this one. Otherwise, he will just keep regenerating his health, getting back up and fighting you until you're out of rings. Which you'll also lose a lot faster if you don't know how to parry the end's attacks, because... The end's attacks can actually chomp away at your rings even while you are supersonic too. So the key is to cut off the umbilical cord from the fake moon to the supreme titan. Which brings me to my only major gripe with this fight, being that I don't think it does a very good job at explaining to you that this is what you have to do. Like, it is clear from the get-go you've got to get that cord off of his head, but it's not clear how to actually do that, and the way to do it feels like an exploit. It is established earlier that if an enemy is blocking your attacks, you can tap one of the shoulder buttons to work your way around to the other side. This isn't really something you've ever had to do with any of the Titan fights, though, or any larger fight for that matter. I, I feel like this could have been better telegraphed if maybe we had the end actually deflecting Sonic's attacks in the same way that those smaller enemies did, with the same little sort of border animation that they had to kind of signify, okay, get round to the other side then. The way that I found out that this was what you had to do was when I tried to do the Wild Rush attack. They will tell you how to do that on the proviso that you 100% the DLC, and I just think that's stupid. And then my only other complaint really is that the camera is either way too close to the trees or way too close to the end himself. Other than that, holy crap, this fight is awesome. You need to have some kind of understanding of the Supreme Titan's architecture to get by on this one. Once you've got the umbilical cord off, you can just smack the crap out of the end until it slumps over, and you might think, okay, the battle is won, but then he'll just pop another umbilical cord on, unless you Psyloop the gun in his back, which is actually presented to you in the way that he slumps, so well played, well telegraphed. And the boss fight is set up in a way that it does build you up lots of quick Psyloop energy, but even if you don't have that, you can still do the manual Psyloop. It's a bit cumbersome, but it is a means to an end. I especially love, though, that if you keep Psylooping the end, Sonic will eventually snap his fingers, bringing the fake moon down on top of the Supreme Titan, snapping it into little pieces before it reforms itself. That is so raw, and you really have to earn it as well, because he will send attacks out after you that you have to parry. You cannot get hit once there, or else you will not see that animation. Fortunately, you don't have to do that, but still, it is such a reward for good play, just seeing this thing snap into its brittle bones. And it goes even further than that. After you've Psylooped the gun, Dr. Eggman takes control of the gun, as he's gonna use this weapon against the end. Okay, awesome, we are actually making use of this cool feature that the Supreme Titan had that barely got used before, and Robotnik is getting properly involved in the fight this time. But of course, the end is so powerful that he starts attacking Robotnik, Sage comes in, and she's trying to protect him, but she can't quite maintain the cyberspace shield, so Amy, Tails, and Knuckles help her. I just love this all-together atmosphere of Sonic and his friends, Dr. Eggman and his daughter, all going up against the end all to save the world for their own reasons. Avenging a fallen civilization, saving the future of the world, and in Eggman's case, saving a world so he can conquer it another day. And then you gotta watch out for your friends as well, because they get their own little health bars, and sometimes the end will try to attack them. And you have to be ready to parry. Also, if you survive long enough to reach the second verse of I'm Here, he will then send out an attack that drains your rings all the way down to 100. And if you don't have 100 rings, you will die instantly from this. But if you do, all you have left is 100 rings to fight with. And it is just a matter of working that health bar down. Then once that's done, you get some sincerely epic QTEs before Sonic flies into the barrel of the Supreme Titan's gun, allows his cyber powers to become unrestrained, turning himself into a living bomb effectively, as Eggman fires him through the Supreme Titan, straight through the fake moon. He's almost like he's taken the weapon of the end and just slamming it through it. Be like, here's your bloody weapon. And he comes out the other end all dirtied and bruised and, oh, it's so good. This fight is so, so good. It is just relentlessly hype, this fight. 
we're seeing the coolest version of Sonic ever going up against a moon and a giant robot, fighting them like they are nothing, while Eggman, Sage, and all of Sonic's friends are teaming up to protect the world and each other. While Otani is going absolutely balls to the walls on the electric guitar, and we've got Kellen Quinn covering I'm Here. And I already liked I'm Here. I already thought the Mary Kirk Holmes version of I'm Here was brilliant. But now we have the Kellen Quinn version, which goes doubly as hard. Otani is going absolutely insane. I've praised fights on this list for having a good amount of spectacle, a good amount of challenge, rewarding players for thinking outside the box, and this fight does all of that, but in a way that is unabashedly epic. In a way that only Sonic could truly pull off. This was an incredibly hype ending, and you can see it in the reactions. Like, Sam procrastinates when he played the game, and he was on this boss, he was crying happy tears. Fidel from Games Cage straight up ripped his shirt from excitement of playing this fight. And I get it. It is just that hype. A far more fitting end to Sonic Frontiers than what we had before. And so that's my ranking of all of the final boss fights in mainline Sonic games. What do you guys think? Make your own lists in the comments below, maybe even do a video on it. It can be a lot of fun, and it can be quite lucrative too, you'll find. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of my list? Comment below, discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support more like it, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below is the link to my patron. For as little as $1 a month, you can get your name in the credits of these videos, get updates about an upcoming Sonic fan project I'm working on called Speeding Ticket, and if you're in the $10 tier, you get an extra special silly shout out from myself, here goes. Glad Goku! Dear Denny! Kale Bennett, that Jordo, 10K of Warheads, Super Hyper Mecha SP Mark II, Soros the Skeptic, can you believe it guys? Spider-Man 2 still just a week away? When am I gonna get my 18 inches of Venom? 19 inches, not 18, I don't know why I said that. At Zinko, update your name you jackass, it's out. Then in the $5 tier we have Kalex, Richard Rogers, SSS06, Dazzle Fizzle, and Vera Wild. Thank you good folks so much for your generosity and support, it means the world to me and to those of you at home, thank you so much for watching and have a supersonic day. Get out.